So, um, <clears throat> good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Um, it's really, really a pleasure to be here today in, in Porto. Uh, unfortunately, I was planning to be here, Alberto, but uh, he suffered a, a small accident, and so I substitute um, his presentation. Um, it is al always a pleasure to be to be here in Oporton and and have the opportunity to to present the the, the, the work. Um, for, for me, to be here is like to be at home, really, no? Because uh, I don't know for many relationship that we have with uh, Portuguese architect and Portuguese architecture. Um, before starting the presentation, for sure, I would like uh, to give a big uh, thanks uh, to AMAG to organize uh, uh, such a beautiful ex exhibition in a very short, short time. It's really a, a, a gift that they gave to, to us. So many, many thanks for this uh, opportunity that, uh, uh, that you gave to us. Uh, I would like also to thank you, um, the model maker, M Mr. Negrello, that did a beautiful model without any kind of supervision, and he interpreted our work in a very beautiful way. Um, and also, yeah, for sure, and also thank you to you to be here uh, in, uh, to, to, have, uh, to share with us this, uh, this afternoon. Um, my intention today was really just to uh, present to you and describe the project that you have seen maybe here in the in the exhibition. No? Uh, but for some reason, I, I would like maybe to, uh, before to present this project, make a short introduction um, after also looking this beautiful presentation by my colleagues and and discovering such a inspiring and beautiful collection of work they are doing in, in, in Ireland. I think, I don't know if Anna or Jose Manuel who decided to put uh, uh, all together to share this uh, evening, but I think they did uh, really, a, a really a great curatorial work in, in some way, because uh, after looking the presentation, I think um, our work and, and uh, sorry, our office and their offices cannot be more close and more distant at the same time. Um, and, and so I, I would spend some minutes before to present the project to clarify this, uh, this sentence. Um, um, they presented some reflection that are really relevant also for us, but maybe for from a different perspective, no? And maybe this has, is related with the different biography or the different uh, context in which we live, or you know, or, or how we started our work, no? So uh, they work is very uh, related with a local context. Uh, and with uh, a small scale and domestic building, no? and and I think I'm I really think that maybe this condition that an architect is able to establish with a context, with an intimate context, with a local context, probably is is, is uh, a kind of uh, is the best relationship in some way that an architect can est establish no? so with uh, uh, with a place in some way, no. If you remember, I don't know, the work of Dudok, he, he spent his entire life working just in a small city, Netherlands. No? Maybe this is a kind of idyllic condition. No? Um, but in our case, uh, because of our biography in some way, I'm Italian, Alberto is Spanish, and we arrived by casualties in Barcelona, uh, this situation essentially didn't, didn't happen. Uh, we didn't uh, have the opportunity to uh, start it, our work um, uh, with domestic, for example, project that we really would love to have the opportunity to, to do it. Uh, but since the beginning, we, we started to work with competitions and uh, another type of project in some way. No? In fact, the three projects that I presented today are, are the result of competition, and, and I think the 
the totality of our work is uh, is coming from from competition. Um, but even if even if we didn't share this uh, starting point, let's say like this, uh, I think there are certain uh, common uh, reflection, no? uh, because um, we started uh, because we come out from a different, uh, uh, how to say, conditions, no? And because we started to work in a very different country, in a very different reality since the very beginning, uh, we really started also to be interested about uh, uh, how to relate it, our project, our architecture, to the specificity of a place, no? Uh, Steve, in this last... Uh, uh, presentation mentioned this word. No, he said that, uh, it's, uh, that they are very interested in establishing a relationship with the specificity of the place, and and I have the, the, the feeling that in some way, put together their presentation, they already made my presentation in some way. E even if the project that I will present are maybe very far away from their approach in some way, so we really started to be. Um, uh, interesting of this notion of uh, specificity, what it means to be uh, specific for a place. And in our case, uh, uh, we started to be interesting of this notion uh, because our architecture in some ways at the beginning and continues to be uh, is uh, an architecture that try to reject a generic architecture in some way. But we really wanted uh, to establish this kind of intimate, uh, empathetic link with our reality. No? Um, a reality is not, uh, or a context um, is not just uh, a physical reality of a place, uh, but, uh, or exists this physical reality, but it's also it's a, an imaginary reality in some way. Many things uh, uh, create uh, a place uh, as it is in some way. No? So our, all our work is based in this notion how to find this uh, uh, contextual relationship with uh, different realities no? in some way. Um, but, from, but at the same time, we are also conscient in some way that uh, the architecture as a um, it is an object in some way, no? and has its own autonomy in some way, no? and it has its own uh, uh, objectual value per se in some way. No? It's part of a story, it's a part of a discipline, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, no? And and step by step, I think that uh, we created our frame of work in some way. Uh, and essentially what we try to do is to find this delicate and difficult balance between the, to be specific for a place, for the, between the specificity of the place and the constitutional autonomy of the form in some way. You know? So our work in some way it's, um, is based on this uh, uh, paradox in some way, how to be specific for a place but at the same time to be not related with the same context. Be conscious that uh, architecture has this kind of uh, autonomy in some way, has its own internal rules. No? So this reflection, um, I, I, I don't have the images because uh, wasn't didn't was my intention uh, today to make this introduction, but uh, um, I think it's, it's, it makes sense after looking also the, uh, the this presentations. Um, so we, we tried to clarify this uh, reflection uh, in a book we made a few years ago in, we, in which we tried to establish this, uh, uh, clarify this uh, methodology of work. No? Uh, in that book we spoke about uh, different notions that for us were important, uh, the notion of specificity, 
the tonality, how to find the right tone instead of a vocabulary in order to link an architecture to a context. Uh, we spoke about uh, the tradition uh, and other things. No? Um, I think all this uh, reflection that we wrote in that text uh, uh, explain in a certain way that what we want to do is essentially work in continuity with something. In fact, uh, yesterday uh, we uh, uh, opened an exhibition of our work and the title of, the, of this exhibition is On Continuity. Because when we started to prepare uh, the, the documentation to, to present in the exhibition, and we really realize in some way that uh, what we want to do is really to be in continuity with something. We are not able to conceive our architecture or even an architecture in some way unrelated with something. We always need to put our um, architecture in an intimate relation with something with this context, with the specificity of a context, but even in a something much bigger. It's uh, the tradition that exists uh, in, uh, in the different parade, or even the tradition of uh, architecture in some way. No? And in order to, to establish this continuity with, with the different realities in which we work, uh, uh, maybe our work um, proceed by analogies. No? Uh, Ryan mentioned the work of Miroslav Sik, no? and, and this idea of uh, analog architecture is also important for us. What we love to do in some ways is to find things uh, around a place, not inventing things, uh, but just really looking carefully at uh, the minor history that exists in a place, no? and in some way still element that exists and transform it into an architecture in order to yeah, integrate or give continuity uh, of a story that, that exists in, in a place. No? And I think this is really the base of, of, our, of our work. No? Um, what we want to do in some way is to be, we want it to be part in some way or continues that line of that beautiful sketches that Colin showed at the beginning no, uh, of the uh, Robert Smithstone, no, uh, in which started from the tent and then from the tent, from the collectivity, arrived to the column, et cetera, et cetera. We really uh, believe that an architecture should be part of this story, of this, conti or give continuity to this, uh, no? uh, and, and from time to time, this means to establish this intimate, specific, and uh, and and sentimental. Also, I like this adjective. Also, we wrote a text our uh, about sentimental architecture, uh, uh, monumentality is what we uh, title our an essay that we wrote um, a few years ago. Uh, so we, we want it, sometimes it's to be part of this content, sometimes, because also uh, it is important, uh, maybe this line of continuity arrive with the tradition of architecture in some, in some way. You know? So, um, and the, the project that I will present uh, now, then I will try to describe uh, um, a little bit in detail the three projects that are there, um, are the result in some way of this uh, of this reflection that in some way I feel that uh, uh, there is a common, uh, how to say, uh, reflection with my colleagues, but maybe at the same time there is this reflection are maybe taken from a different perspective, no? Because what I will present to you are really quite big building in some way, institutional building, let's say, um, like this. and. Uh, uh, with a different program, no, in some way. Um, so uh, I will start the, the presentation. Um, let me see. So 
Um, during, we have the opportunity for or more or less 10 years to work in Switzerland. By casualty, we started, we won a competition very young in, for a museum in Lausanne. One year later, we have the opportunity to work in another museum, and one year later, we have other, the other projects. So um, uh, during, yeah, nine years, 10 years, uh, our, the, our activity, uh, the major activity of the office was based in Switzerland. Now is a little bit uh, spread uh, uh, and around. And this decade for us has, has been really, really important because I think has, uh, has been a super important exercise and, and we, we felt that uh, we grow as architect after doing all this, uh, uh, this job. So uh, the first project I will present uh, is uh, a fine art museum in Kur in Switzerland. Kur, you know, is this small and city in the middle of the Graubünden region in the German part of um, uh, Switzerland. And this was an extension of an original building. Uh, the museum is quite small, but it has a very beautiful uh, collection of uh, works related with uh, German expressionism. These are some images of the collection that we have, very, very well structured and Precise. I think it's uh, really beautiful that the collection they they have in some way, and this collection was hosted before of the competition in this building. Um, this building was the original uh, place of the museum. Um, uh, the name of this building is Villa Planta, uh, and uh, he was built in the 18th century as a residence for a very very wealthy. Uh, uh, merchant that imported uh, textile from Egypt. You know? And it is a very eclectic uh, and bizarre uh, building, fascinating at the same time, but a little bit strange. So it is a Palladian building uh, inspired by um, the Palladio scheme of La Rotonda, uh, but is, is exists also a, a, a decorative uh, um, um, apparatus, I don't know how to say, uh, in the in the facade, in the in the interior, etc., etc. No, we and and all this kind of ornamentation has a kind of uh, orientalistic taste in some way. No, this taste was part of the of this uh, historical period, but also it was a kind of uh, homage that the, this uh, person made to Orient, no? the, the place in which it ported textile. Um, this building in 1982 was uh, um, renovated uh, by Peter Zumthor and he added uh, these two very beautiful winter garden uh, and he, well, no, he re reconstructed in some way this beautiful winter garden with this uh, uh, very thin uh, wooden element, very, very nice in some way. And also he transformed the basement as a uh, temporary exhibition space. Um, as I say before, but this, this building is a little bit eclectic in some ways. So you are in the middle of Switzerland, but you find Sphinx in, in the entry. Uh, the reason I already described why in some way. And around the building there is a quite small garden, you know, uh, populated by this type of romantic sculpture. A small garden, but quite important because it permits to create a filter between the, this uh, piece, this architecture, and the, and the context in some way. You know? So um, and this is, one, uh, is the view of one of uh, the most beautiful rooms of this building in which uh, the filigrain of this and this orientalistic uh, taste in some way uh, it emerged, no? it's quite uh, evident, no? and this appears also in the central uh, courtyard and other part of the, of the building. No? So, um, as I said before, what we uh, like to do, or, or the methodology in some way of work uh, uh, that we, we, or the attitude that we uh, move our work is really try to, uh, I don't know, establish this link with the specificity of the place. We like to, uh, no, not we like, what we want to do it is, is really to find elements that are really uh, 
in some way uh, define the, the identity of, uh, of a place. No? Uh, in this case, uh, the element that already exists uh, in the original building for us were important in some way. This was a project, uh, uh, this was an extension of this pre-existing building and some way for us, in some way for us was important to establish uh, a continuity between the original building and the future building in some way. No? So we started to read carefully the plan of the original building no? with this super precise double symmetry inspired obviously by, uh, by La, La Rotonda. And in, in, a sense, in a certain way, this idea of uh, to be part of a tradition that already influenced the original building and also maybe can continue to influence our building no? and establish this kind of line that link all the elements. No? So in a way, this idea of uh, uh, to, to, to find or, or, or go or try to interpret, to, to achieve a kind of absolute architecture or an ideal uh, architecture was important or started to be important when we did the, the proposal in some way. So in some way the building, um, uh, when we, we started to have this idea that the building should act as a diptych in some way, no? try to use the same element, the same palette in some way, material palette or element that exists uh, and, and in, in both buildings, no? uh, but preserving each of building its own independence, its own character in some way. No? So, um, and the, we started uh, to draw this, uh, this plan. This plan is, uh, is the plan that we presented uh, during the competition. Um, in which appears the new building. No? This is, is this small piece of architecture here. And in some way, uh, this drawing is a very synthetic drawing, very, very simple in some way, but very dense at the same time. No? Because uh, in this uh, um, uh, drawing appears all the elements that already exist in Villa Planta. It's a building that is made by a double symmetry that extracts the geometry of the pre-existing building and in some way reuse the same element that exists in the pre-existing building. The originality was here with a portal, reappear here, etc., etc. And, and it condensed everything in a, in a very small uh, footprint um, in which just appears the two cores, one public, one uh, for service, and it defined the entire project. No? And it keep, uh, and it keep uh, in the middle a small foyer, which is really a small um, public space in some way. No? Uh, the projects that I will present are all institutional projects, public projects, and uh, for us, uh, it is important that our building really started with the reflection about how to create a public space in some way. No? Then, then I will be more precise on it. But uh, in many cases, our, our projects are really just the frame for the urban. No? Then you will see maybe in Lausanne better this, uh, this, uh, this idea. So, and Starting with this drawing, uh, this is the result of the proposal. And in some way, this, uh, uh, the, the extension of this museum uh, is still a Palladian building in some way, uh, in which appears in some way a bas relief, no? the facade has a bas relief in some way, that create this kind of uh, ornamentation, let's see if it is ornamentation or not, that establish a, a kind of uh, a link with the element that exists in the original building. So this idea of ornamentation that exists in the original building, see this a Palladian influence that marked the original building, appears also in the, in, in, in the new proposal. And this is exactly an example of what we intend to find this balance, balance between uh, the specificity of a place and the autonomy of a form. In some way, the building stall try to find elements uh, that uh, already exist in some way and has been 
than transforming and other things. And, but at the same time, it is conscious of its own autonomy in some way. It's an independent building in some way. No? And these are other views of the same building. But what was for us was really important, and is not very evident well, at the first glimpse, uh, is uh, to keep this void, this more mineral, uh, let's say, garden no? around the the building, because this space, this empty space, this act as a basement, basement, was the element able to link the new building with the original building and put together and conform with the two buildings a new urban element, a, 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 new urban, a, coherent, a coherent urban element in some way. So what is really important when we did the competition, for sure, is the object in itself, uh, but has been as the same relevance, the space in between the two buildings, the space here. Because in some way, this is something that permits to give to the building the right scale you know, uh, into the context, and it permits to establish this precise and rigorous uh, relationship with the pre existing building. No? Um, um, and also this uh, mineral basement, it's, it's related with the garden that surrounds the uh, Villa Planta, and in some way it, it's able to link both things. Um, so in this project, it's not very evident, but I really like to present always in this way, because when we started the proposal, really we made a huge, huge effort just in trying to reducing the scale of this of this uh, building in order to fit and insert the building in the, in the most uh, precise and appro appropriate way uh, into, the, into the, the urban context. And in many cases in our project, this kind of uh, uh, the reflection about how to conform public space, how to uh, create this kind of void, this uh, this uh, buffer space with the, with the context is supported by a quite radical uh, programmatic idea. In this case, in order to achieve uh, the scale of this building, the distance with the original building, we invert essentially the typical program of a museum and we put all the uh, exhibition area, the temporary and permanent, in the, in the underground. So essentially, uh, the 60% of the or maybe even more, 70% of the, the project is here, and what's happened outside is just the most public function, the foyer, the pedagogical space, uh, atelier, et cetera, et cetera. And also in this way, uh, we were able to link uh, the new building with the historical building without any connection, no? but just the connection, it's uh, underground some way. So, and this appear, and the two buildings has appeared as to uh, independent building, no? but made by the same uh, conceptual material in, in some way. No? So the foyer is, uh, is declared this uh, 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 dependent, this relationship with the original building, the facade of the original building is the facade of the new, uh, of the new foyer. And it is important also to mention that uh, in order really to find the right scale, the right relationship with the pre-existing building, we forced also uh, the, um, we, inter we tried to force it synergies between the different uh, programs. So for example, this foyer, which is, is the most noble part of the building, it is also the loading dock of the uh, of the museum. So uh, we propose to the client, the competition, to use this space when the museum is closed as a uh, loading area in some way, um, in order really to reduce, again, at the maximum, the dimension of, of the building. And this is also the reason why we organize the fall ceiling in this way, because essentially this is just a, 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 a ceiling that filter uh, the, the air, because behind here there is a big installation in order to absorb all the um, all the gas that the trucks produce in some way. You know? So um, 
And this is interesting, and, is, and it is the same that happens in the facade in some way. Uh, we, for us in this project, it was important to uh, reflect about this idea of ornament that exists in the pre-existing building, but use it to solve very functional problem, very pragmatic problem. So this kind of uh, ornamentation that appears here is, is really a technical element that permits to uh, to organize the installation in a certain way. And the facade, this bas relief, is something that is related with the historical building, but at the same time, it's essentially a, a, a bristle ale that permits to filter the light into the building, and it's also an element that permits to hide all the technical things that uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, museum has in the facade, no, in some way. So, we in, we, we, but is this is something that also appears in other of our projects in, in some way, no? which we, we found this limit between, uh, we try to transform an, an, an ornament into a functionalist element in some way. No? So starting from here, there is a, a big uh, stairs that going down in concrete, etc., etc., and we arrive in the minus one level. No? And here, I, I think this, uh, let's say, Palladian spirit it's uh, super evident in some way. No? The plan is just uh, a composition of uh, several uh, very simple rooms uh, with different proportion, and this combinatory system is, is something that arrives from uh, the plans of Palladio in some way. No? But it's also as the same scheme they organized the, the uh, original building, no? the Villa Planta. No? So, it, uh, it, it permits, again, to establish this uh, conceptual link in some way with the pre-existing building. No? Um, so in this is the level of the permanent exhibition. So all these uh, uh, rooms host this beautiful collection that they have. Uh, we paid a lot of attention to uh, how to work with the artificial light because, uh, because of the... Uh, yeah, all the uh, need of the museum. We put the temporary the, the gallery underground, so we we try to really emphasize uh, also the height and the dimension of the space and uh, achieve with the artificial light the most comfortable and natural uh, light that is artificial. And I think uh, it's difficult to present it with images, but if you visit the museum, I think this uh, feeling to be in a quite generous uh, and and uh, space, it's, it's quite evident. No? Um, this is the stairs that connect uh, with uh, the other, the historical building. And in minus two, uh, the project there, it's it just two cores and an enclosure, essentially. Nothing else than this. No? And this, it really manifests the effort that we try to do in all the projects in order to reduce really the architecture to uh, just a few things. No? This core create the, for sure the structure of the of the um, uh, the building it makes sense from a constructive point of view but also it makes sense from a programmatic point of view because it permit to keep the entire floor completely free in order and then this uh, space can be divided by the curator the director in function of the different uh, need no? so it it uh, try to give to the museum the maximum uh, flexibility in some way no? It, so it tried to solve also the complexity of a pro, the complexity that is inherent of a museographical uh, project with simplicity in some way, in a very direct and also pragmatic way in some way. Um, these are some images of this, uh, these galleries. No? Um, so as I uh, as I mentioned before, um, the work. Um, we always are very interested in discovering how to build something, you know, how to pass from a concept into the um, uh, reality in some way, and the material reality. You know? uh, the architecture is, uh, is full of uh, amazing concepts that then during the construction uh, they move, move away from the beautiful concept and, and became uh, really bad architecture in some way. No? So um, the same, um, how to say, density that we tried to put in the original idea, we wanted to transmit also in the, in the materiality of, of the building, in the materialization of the building. 
So in this case, the facade of the building for us was really important. Um, it's a facade, as I mentioned, established this kind of resonances with the pre-existing uh, architecture. But this notion of uh, specificity, it uh, doesn't mean only to establish a specific relationship with uh, uh, physical things, uh, but, it, but it means also to discover how you can build something. No? So in this case, for example, we have the opportunity to work with uh, concrete. Uh, it's obvious in some way, and Fistron, they have the uh, capacity to produce really uh, incredible um, concrete in some way. And this gave us the opportunity really to create uh, in a super detailed way this kind of uh, relief or bas relief in the facade, achieving a degree of detail uh, super precise in, in some way. And, and this means also take advantage no? to work with the specificity of a place, of a context, no? in a general, in a wider sense, no? to take advantage of the constructive system that uh, a place has. No? For example, this project is completely different from what we did some year before uh, in a philharmony we did in Poland, no? in which uh, the symphonic hall was really a huge artisanal work in some way. It was really about craftsmanship, no? because in that context they had knowledge to work in that way. No? Uh, so we really, really try to um, discover how to uh, take advantage of this different uh, situation. So this kind of ornament is really not on, is, is, is not an ornament because it's really in part of the building, this kind of brisolate, the filter light, and hide all um, the technical stuff that appears in the building. Um, in this very rigorous and precise uh, double symmetry that organized the entire proposal, uh, appears these doors that is, uh, is the only uh, dissonant element in some way that it really mark uh, the entry of the truck into the foyer. No? Because in some way this, this element was really the element that permit to develop all the narrative in some way, to reduce the, the scale of the building, to permit to create the plinth, the right insert, etc., etc. et cetera. So this is one of the reasons why market uh, with the same pattern but with a different material. This is stainless steel, um, uh, very well done because it's, made, it's covered with the same uh, pattern. Where well, we market this element as a really important uh, element of the building. And in this view, uh, you started to notice the relevance and the importance of this, of this basement, no? of this plinth, really, because it is a plinth in which uh, uh, the building sit in some way. No? And here you started to realize that something happened underground no? uh, in some way. But also it is this kind of platform that uh, in a, it, it gives a kind of abstraction to the building, but also it permits uh, to, I don't know, to extend this basement into Villa Planta and conform this urban uh, unity no? in some way. So this proposal, um, also, it's, a, um, it's a really a reflection about uh, how um, means to be specific for a place, being conscious of the uh, inherent autonomy of every architecture in some way. Um, nine months before doing that competition, uh, we did uh, this other competition for the Musée Cantonal de Beaux-Arts in Lausanne. It's another fine art museum. Uh, it is a completely different uh, project uh, in some way. Um, the collection, it's uh, very different from the other one. Space, uh, they have a, the museum started because uh, they have a lot of painting by Felix Vallotton, an impressionist artist that uh, was born in Lausanne. And, uh, and in recent years, they uh, started to enlarge the collection with contemporary art, Pennone, Soulage, and, and many others. No? So the collection is much more, um, how to say, um, uh, 
eclectic, let, let's say like this, and this also had an influence in how to organize uh, the gallery in the museum, respect to the, the core museum, for example. Um, but before, um, to, in, in order to understand this project, it is important to mention a little bit the story of this competition, because I think it's quite, uh, uh, I don't know, it's um, interesting in some way, because uh, before the competition that we won, uh, I think five years before, uh, there was another competition for the same fine art museum. Um, and, the, and the place of the museum was more or less here, out of the image, no? in a natural park facing the uh, Lac Le Mans, facing the... Uh, the, the French Alps in front. So there was a winner, they developed the project, et cetera, et cetera, and then there was a referendum. There was a referendum, and the citizen of Lausanne rejected very clearly this proposal. Not because of the architecture, maybe the project was, uh, I, I didn't see it, but maybe it was a beautiful project, but essentially because they really rejected that a museum was... Uh, uh, placed in a very beautiful natural place along uh, along the lake in some way. No? So in some way uh, the the citizen um, didn't interpret uh, a museum as a jewel that is places in an idyllic environment in some way. No? But they just wanted to preserve the environment. Uh, for the authorities it was really a shock in some ways. Um, but Years later, they uh, really understood, in some way, the message. And they, uh, instead of uh, make a step back, they made a step uh, forward, in some way. So they really completely modified the approach toward the museum. And they proposed to make, in this area here, no, in the middle of uh, the city of Lausanne, in a kind of industrial area. This is the train station along the, the, the train here, you know, the rail station. So to put in this area not only the Fine Art Museum, but the Fine Art Museum, the, but the tr put there the three important museums that, that Lausanne has. So the Fine Art Museum, the de Design Museum, and the um, Photography Museum. No? But they promote a completely different approach in some way. They select a, veer, a very um, um, forgotten place or hidden place, uh, neglected place, I say, in the middle of the, of, the, of the city. And with the museum, they wanted to promote really a urban transformation. So, and I think this gave a, a really important message now that a museum is no more just a beautiful things that you put there, but it really uh, makes sense if it's able to create a urban transformation. It's, a, it's a, an active urban element that transforms our city and should make it more livable in some way. No? So, and the, this proposal by authority was really uh, interesting in some way. And also, in some way, it marks our approach to the, to the proposal. So the area that they selected was quite big, more than 2.5 acres, uh, populated by different uh, buildings, different ages, 77, not very relevant in some way. And there was one building here uh, made in 1911, uh, which from an architectural point of view wasn't so interesting in some way, also in a very bad condition. Uh, but in some way, it uh, mark a critical element in order to transform the entire area in some way. You know? uh, this, if you notice here, there was this element with a beautiful window there facing south. This is facing south you know, in some way. So um, this, was, this diagram shows uh, how this plate was before the intervention. So and when we started the, 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 the competition, the proposal, essentially, we really tried to uh, transform, modify, uh, do, do something with the buildings there. But step by step, we realized that probably uh, this was not enough in some way because the goal of this proposal and the goal also of the, of the general uh, project was really to transform the city, not only the building in some way. No? So step by step, uh, 
uh, we started to see uh, references in which uh, the object, the architecture, and the urban space in some, um, in some way uh, start to blend, no? to, to be mixes. No? These are uh, the uffizi, no? and the uffizi is in Florence. No? This is marvelous because you really don't know which, uh, where start the architecture, where the urban uh, ending in some way. No? Is the urban that conform the architecture or the architecture that has been conformed the urban space in some way? No? So we started to look at this type of reference. And step by step, our interest move from the object to the urban space in some way. No? If you notice in these uh, early sketches, the line mark really the void, not only the building. The building are uh, strange and, and not very clear form around the void. But the void, every time, start to be more and more present, more and more relevant from the proposal. And then, uh, at the end of this process, uh, the three museums started to appear as just uh, element that create the frame of this esplanade in some way. No? And then we arrive to define these diagrams no? in which we try to, fall, to solve the complexity of this place because this is a cul-de-sac, you can enter only through here. It, no? And also the complexity organized three museum, connected, etc., etc., with just the juxtaposition of three simple prism, three simple element that essentially they just mark the frame of a urban place. Um, we always try to solve complexity with just basic things. No, It happens in the museum in Kur and it's, uh, it's happened also in this kind of uh, um, strategic urban proposal, let's say like this. It was the model that we presented uh, uh, the competition and the final museum was this long bar. The other two element was uh, the, uh, the design museum and the photography museum. So uh, essentially, um, yeah, there was the general master plan uh, with the museum and uh, in order to emphasize uh, the, this urban approach toward the project, for sure we decided to uh, demolish a big part of this uh, historical building in some way. But also we started to uh, interrogate ourselves about what does it mean to preserve something. Is it possible to establish a kind of continuity with a place without preserving the, the totality or the integrity of something? No? So we started to realize that probably this kind of continuity with the memory of, of this place, uh, with uh, the history of this place, also could be achieved by a constellation of fragments in some way. No? So we started to um, consider to recuperate and transform this old arcade here. We started to consider to um, preserve the different floors of the different building preserve element of the trains, etc., etc., and also preserve fragments of the original building. So this constellation of fragments in order uh, could give a certain sense of uh, permanence of the, of the tradition, of the history of this place. No? Um, in a second step, a year later, there was a, another competition. Uh, the program of the new museum was dramatically reduced in some way there's another competition and uh, uh, the proposal by Irish Mateus um, they combine both building in one blocks and use this as service spine in some way and finalize in some way this process of uh, reduction simplification of the all the strategy no? uh, the, the, all the, 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 the strategic plan for for the urban space in some way but Regarding the, the museum, once we decided this uh, urban approach, uh, uh, the, really the museum, the project of the museum arrived very, very easily, very, very direct. It was obvious in some way. No? So uh, the museum started to appear as an inhabited wall in some way, this long bar which main function was to define uh, the new public space and protect the public space from the, the train in some way. So um, 
It's really an, an element that in some kind is linked with this urban approach. No? Um, so these are the archive and this is uh, the building. And this inhabited wall in South Wales, it's Lincoln, the starting point of all the narrative of this proposal, it is exactly here, in this small element of the pre-existing building that we conserve and transform in the capital element uh, or the starting element of the entire new uh, proposal in some way. No? So this is the section uh, through this uh, small element of the pre-existing pre building in which we insert the new foyer. So uh, the building, once completed, um, appears in some way as a huge uh, infrastructural element, no? uh, similar in a certain way to the other big buildings like the train here and other buildings uh, that uh, are sitting along the trains in some way. No? Um, and the major function of this elongated bar was really to open uh, this uh, unexpected public space in some way. Um, this really was a site uh, that was uh, completely um, disconnected with the city and I think the major goal of the proposal was really to discover to the citizen this potential that has this site here in some way. No? Um, in spite of the dimension, we are speaking about a building that has 150 meter long by 22, 24. So uh, we tried our best in order to f fit the building in a, the most uh, natural uh, way in, into the into the context. No? In some way, from the uh, the plaza, uh, from the, the plaza in front of the train station, appeared this this building because the perspective helped to keep the distance from the other building in a similar way. Uh, uh, like Kur in, in some way. And when you approach, you started to discover this kind of um, enigmatic building in some way. No? Um, but it's, it's a building that, uh, again, you want to be specific uh, uh, for, for this place. No? It's, again, is the, it's an effort in order to find this bal balance uh, between a certain degree of specificity and a certain degree of abstraction in some way. No? All our buildings are really based on this paradox, no? uh, how to be contextualist at the same time, but how to be independent from the, the context in which you put the place. No? So, um, and in this building essentially appears um, industrial resonances in some way. No? It's like uh, uh, we wanted to preserve the character of this place, this uh, uh, artificial place because we are in a platform is the only platform that exists uh, uh, in Lausanne because Lausanne is a, in a city uh, inclined towards the lake and there is just this artificial platform because where the train passes. No? So um, it is really an, a kind of it's a huge fabric in some way. It's a container for art. It's uh, something that is related conceptually with the story and the, uh, of, of, this, of, this, uh, of this place. Uh, it is made in brick, the same uh, material that was made also in the other uh, building. Um, and as it has a certain degree of abstraction in some way. You know, it is animatic from outside, but when you enter in the building and if you visit it, you discover that it's uh, uh, completely um, um, uh, infilled by natural light no? in the roof and in this facade because this facade is really a, a big tools in order to filter the northern light that arrive from, uh, from here. Uh, but again, this image also shows apart this uh, effort in order to be specific for a place uh, shows the importance of this uh, public space. This is really the core of the project, so the conceptual core of the project. And the building is just the frame that permit to create this public space. Uh, this is during the construction of the other museum, uh, the opposite uh, view with the train station at uh, the end. But as I mentioned before, um, once we decided to, uh, uh, to 
reduce the, the preservation of just a part of a historical building, we started to interrogate how to create this kind of constellation of uh, fragments. No? So, and, and these are sketches that's, uh, il that explain the, this reflection in some way. And this element that I present uh, uh, you before, no? uh, it's really the crucial element of the entire project. No? Is this small uh, figure that appears above this neutral background in some way, no? And it declares again the dependence of this new architecture for to this historical element in some way. Uh, from this side, the building is very opaque, completely opaque, also because of law that does not permit uh, to open windows into the gallery in some way, uh, but was permit just to open windows in the um, where does it appear art in some way, so in the public space. So from this is it's very opaque, just a neutral background in some way, and from the other part, the building much more permeable in some way. Um, it's very, very permeable. In fact, the ground floor here um, is, is completely open toward this public space. In these images, you start to see how we organize the, pro the landscape project, preserving of this uh, Floor. I think it's in this kind of huge urban transformation, it's very, very easy. It's super easy to lose really the character of, of the place. Uh, uh, what we tried to, to do is to give continuity to this character in some way through the collection of this fragment. Uh, these are kind of uh, 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 ur uh, urban furniture, but we didn't do it. Uh, it's another project. It's another story. Um, so behind this appa apparently hermetic facade, in reality, behind of the vertical uh, bar is like that. So the, the, the ground floor is completely open, and we have this huge window that brings light into the, into the gallery. So very quickly, um, the, the ground floor is really an extension of the public space inside of, uh, of the building, and this element mark the entire proposal in some way. Uh, we mark it from one side the entry in some way. You cross, you enter into this space here. No? So this element of the pre-existing building, uh, this uh, element that for us has had a very, um, was an emotional element. It was these huge windows facing south that permit to light enter it uh, directly to, uh, into the building. Uh, and being transformed in this in a completely different things, but is still the major actor into this plate in some way. No? So, and in a certain way, this series of images is a um, kind of visual explanation of what we intend about uh, uh, of giving continuity to something. No? It just taking things, what you find, really, not inventing things, just find things and transform it in some way. No? Um, these are images of the same foyer, etc., uh, etc. Et spaces in the ground floor dedicated to young artists connected with the public space. And then again, the proposal is, is super pragmatic. The central void, temporary exhibition, permanent exhibition, and here there is a connection that permits uh, to the visitor to uh, visit the building like this and move it there, et cetera, et cetera. There are two big stairs that, uh, that surround this uh, central foyer that permit to go up and arrive in the different area without crossing the exhibition in order to give flexibility of use uh, uh, to the curators and the, the director of the museum. Um, this is the first floor. and. Um, what is maybe interesting here is that uh, to see how it's built very pragmatic in some way, but this very complex building is just solved by a sequence of cores that conform the structure, organize the program, etc., etc. It's a very synthetic building in some way. Um, the materiality of the public space, it's very mineral. It permits to filter very, in a beautiful way, the northern light. And because of the collection that they the museum has, 
we decided here to modify in the materiality inside of the gallery, respect the projecting core, for example. We use in wood, essentially, uh, because it's a kind of materiality that permit to the curator and director to present uh, contemporary art, but also, let's say, classical art or historical art. Uh, in, you know. um, so the, 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 there's no any kind of uh, aesthetic decision of this, but it's a very, again, pragmatic decision in some way. No? Just to, a museum is just a spaces, neutral spaces to present art in the best way. So in the first floor, the gallery are quite uh, lower with uh, northern light here. And at the end, uh, after the competition, we introduce these uh, huge stairs here. Then these are really uh, are tools that permit to establish a geographical link in some way. You know? When you arrive from one side here, you have the view towards the, the, the plaza in some way, the public space, and when you go up here, you have a beautiful view towards the lake, the only beautiful words, a view towards the, the lake. No? And, uh, and it, it, this is really cut the entire building. No? I don't have yet images of this space, but during the night, for example, it's beautiful because you can see the entire section no, of this there. This is also a place for you know, presentation, kids, etc., etc. No? So from, from this side, we see the plaza, and from the other side, when you are up, you see the, the lake. So this is the reason why all the, ele all the windows are behind this element. In fact, they act as a louvers in some way, but these uh, emerge from the facade and uh, mark really this cut in some way that establish this uh, crossing view through the building in some way. Mm, yeah, in the upper floor, again, uh, it's, uh, it's more evident this uh, just the organization by this uh, super simple you know, of this uh, different uh, building. Um, uh, the main characteristic of this floor is the introduction of natural light in the in the roof. Uh, is these elements is a really hyper sophisticated uh, things because it permit to bring northern light, but with the right amount of light. Uh, it also permit to highlight the space, but control the overheating of the space. So it's really a, we made all together with the engineers and techniques, etc., and, and collective effort in order to this. So we spent years to, for doing these uh, apparently very very simple things. It was a difficulties because the building is oriented east west, and uh, so we needed to to bring light for the long side of the facade. No? For the reason we organize, organize this element as a as, as a grid in some way, no? but all the f technical things that appears here, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, essentially we try to solve in the most easy way. This roof, when you visit the museum, appears really as a light element that is just above the the gallery. Uh, now the span is 20 meter between the other one, so we are speaking about quite relevant dimension in some way. Um, yeah, and introduce uh, and very softly the natural light into the space that really mark the atmosphere of this, uh, of this area. No? Um, the entire building I mentioned is made in brick uh, based on this uh, in situ concrete plinth no? that give this kind of uh, sense of mass and permanence to the building. No? Another constant in our job is really to try to transmit this kind of, this sense of permanence in, in places. No? And, and everything, this very big and complex building at the very end is just solved with this element no? in a most simple way. The last project is uh, uh, the, old, the, the, the most recent project that we made in, uh, in, in uh, we finalized a few years ago, um, probably is the most um, experimental, let's say, like, like this. Um, so uh, this is a dance house, so an academy for dance in Zurich. Um, it is placed along the river no, here. These are images I take in during a site visit. They are quite bad, but they illustrate quite well how the quarter is. Um, it's a very beautiful quarter, very with a lot of uh, 
<coughs> charm in some way. It was an, uh, an artisan area, later industrial area, but uh, there are silos, uh, infrastructure. This is a bus rail that crossing the, the bridge. Uh, there are new buildings uh, uh, there. Um, it was, these are other images, another infrastructure here, the big bridge for the train. This is a silo they were building here, uh, a factory, and also appeared this very, very beautiful uh, wooden um, structure. It was a place for changing room for having uh, to swim here, essentially. No? So it's very, very heterogeneous industrial um, um, element populated by this kind of um, infrastructure in some way. And the site is, is here uh, of the proposal. So there, w there was a, a building there, then this building suffered, uh, it was burned, and then and they, they made another competition for, for, for there. So um, in spite of the other, pro the, the two museums are really institutional uh, program in some way. You know? In this way, uh, this is a small building in some way, that essentially just replace uh, uh, um, an, an, uh, another building and are just host uh, space for dance in some way. No? And, and suddenly, we, uh, one of the first idea of this proposal was really uh, just try to establish a kind of uh, link with all the infrastructure, bridges, and elements that populated the the site, no? and and for us in this case again, like in the other one, uh, was in some way not necessary to give presence to the building, but was much more important again to create a coherent space for for the for citizen, to create public space in some way. So, and the building start to be here just a. Uh, topography in this way. This is not defined an object, but the project is just a topography. So we uh, didn't decide to build a building here, an object, but in this case, it's just a topography that uh, permit to have a garden in the upper part, a public garden, and permit to the people crossing the, bu the building here with a beautiful view over the uh, river, and also it make an effort in order to enlarge this promenade no, along the river that existed there, but it was very, not dangerous, is not the right word, uh, but it was a little bit uh, unsecure, let's say like that. Um, in fact, um, in order to create a coherent public space and give primacy to this uh, um, civic aptitude uh, of the proposal, we really decide to organize the entry of the building, not from the street. Uh, the, the main entry should be made here, but we force it to put the entry here in order really to force the, the visitors and whatever to cross and move towards the, the promenade and enter into the, into the building. So uh, the building acts really as a, as a plinth, no? It gives continuity in some way to this uh, wooden structure here. No? It's a very elongated building in which that permits to manifest the presence of the historical building, not interrupt the, the view of this building towards the, the river, and it continues with the other walls here. No? So uh, we use at the maximum, in a, again, in a very pragmatic way, all the side we had inserted in the in the section in some way, and, and we put this kind of strange foyer, very, very narrow, very, very elongated, in order to emphasize this civic condition, again, of the, of the building. No? And it's quite nice to see how this, li this line of the historic bath, no? it is extended here, and then it moves, uh, et cetera, et cetera, there. No? So the building, it's a kind of urban, Scenography, let's say la like this, is a kind of uh, uh, new infrastructure, new public infrastructure that permit to the visitor to move freely wherever they, they want it. 
but in, all, in this effort to create really an infrastructure, uh, the secret of this um, building, and not the secret, uh, but an important thing uh, is, is explained by this drawing. This is the key detail of, uh, of the entire proposal. Uh, we really wanted to create just a structure, uh, reduce the building to a structure, nothing else. So in order to this, uh, we decided to make the entire building with uh, light insulated concrete. Uh, it's really a kind of, at the same time, very archaic building because it's just mass, but also at the same time very sophisticated in some way. So uh, this is a section through this trapezoidal column in some way. It's like this because uh, we needed uh, this uh, mass in order to create insulation without any different uh, layer inside of the building. And, and, and this detail, it's because the carpentry is attached directly to the concrete. And this detail, it is like this because it permits to uh, break the thermal point in some way. And this is really the critical element. Once we solve this element, and once we decided the public strategy in some way, the building was done in some way. No? And so we made a lot of mock-ups uh, and tested, because there are other buildings that use this type of concrete. But this is, at least maybe I'm wrong, but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that is the only one that used this concrete as a structural element because the characteristic of this concrete is that uh, uh, doesn't have uh, mechanical resistance but we uh, uh, and also the fact that we organize this kind of uh, it is a window or it is a column I don't know exactly but this column like this in order essentially to reduce the span between the different column uh, give mass here and do and be able to use this concrete as a structural element, not just with a, a revetment, no, in, in some way. So um, the form of this element in some way is very, very linked with uh, a structural element, but not only all this, then we will see more, more reflection. So uh, we use this concrete in this, uh, all the vertical uh, walls and the horizontal walls as with the traditional, uh, concrete because we needed mechanical resistance. Uh, I forgot to mention that this is, uh, the 90% of this concrete is recycled from uh, other buildings in some way. Um, and it appears, so you start to understand this is really, it's it just a mass, just a facade, just a, an infrastructure, not, not, nothing else. No? So after that, uh, by part of our clothes with stainless steel to make entry, et cetera, et cetera. But there was an important thing that, um, and, and maybe this is why the building is a little bit pioneeristic, no? uh, or experimental, uh, because the building facing uh, west. So it uh, was mandatory to have sun protection in some way. Um, so essentially the authorities wanted to uh, put over the building just louvers and louver to protect the uh, the facade in some way. There is a very strict law that controls this uh, aspect. Uh, for uh, for us, for sure, uh, working in this way was a completely disaster in some way. No, but step by step, we started to we came out with an idea that was a little bit um, crazy for the authorities. But step by step, uh, we we have been able to convince them. And we proposed them to uh, use, er, to replace vegetation, uh, replace the louver with vegetation. Uh, apparently, at the, at the beginning, this idea was uh, really uh, super strange. Uh, but step by step, they started to realize that maybe using vegetation as a really technical element maybe was interesting. So they supported us, they put together an, an, a, a collective of uh, techniques, uh, agronomers, engineers, etc., etc., in order to discover. And year after, so uh, we have been uh, really built the building this way. We avoid to have as any kind of mechanical element. So uh, all the openings are um, 
fulfilled by this vegetation in some way. We selected, but well, not we, the agronomists selected uh, six different species, uh, autochthonous from the place. Everyone uh, has a different period in which the leaf is open or the flower is open and closed and permit to control really and act as a really a, a, a technical melon that permits to control the sun inside of the building. So, but at the same time, again, it's, um, it's a, for us a really interesting thing because it's really the first time that uh, vegetation is used in this kind of uh, very technical and pragmatic function. But also it is a, really a, an important element for the project because uh, it permits, it depends on the season, that the vegetation contaminated the building and in some way uh, the building really became a kind of contemporary ruin, just, um, a, just a structure populated by vegetation that is related with the vegetation that is in front of, uh, of uh, the building. No? But this is not a kind of romantic approach. There's no kind of nostalgia in this proposal or in many other proposals we did, but it's really a reflection about to use an element, uh, to give to an element different meanings in some way. No? So um, this, then the building again is pragmatic. The section is because of the public space, but also because host uh, administration, studios, and the foyer, which are skylight there. Um, the building disappeared from upside, just a very um, um, informal garden, no? Um, first level, nothing to say, just a very um, administration things and the facade that permit to create this continuity between the interior and the, uh, as in the interior. No? These are these spaces for administration, everything with the same, this is, um, everything is in the same concrete without insulation, so it's just uh, a mass in some way with the stairs that brings go down in the in the dance studio. This section permit to host the big theater, the, the big studio ballet, uh, dance studio, sorry. And then the, the most important thing here is that this kind of strange, very thin, narrow and elongated foyer that essentially act as a extension of the promenade inside of the building and permit then the entry into the, into, uh, no? Um, the, the, the section also helped to, like in cool in some way, to give, to permit to build in breathe in some way. And you have, uh, it's not, this is, this at the beginning was very narrow and we tried to enlarge at the maximum to, to really uh, use these passages as a public space. Now, for example, the cafe that is here is one of the most popular in, in Zurich. It's a beautiful spot to have a beer and, and, and it's full of people there and we are really happy with, with this use of the building in some way. And the fact that we use the vegetation here, it really permits uh, the picture, our picture, no? but uh, to create a very beautiful atmosphere no? because the sun is always filtered by uh, the, uh, the green, the vegetation that uh, appears here. Uh, we use uh, also concrete here in order to control the acoustic of the space and to also create the structure for the internal uh, facade. You know? And this is really a kind of foyer that they can use for uh, passerelle and dance and uh, yeah, all this space. Foyer, a studio, dance studio, nothing special. Uh, the big studio bring light from the terrace there. Um, very straightforward in some way. Uh, yeah, and here at the at the end, you uh, see the building in relationship uh, with the bridge, uh, nature, etc. It's it's it really want to be part of this uh, ensemble. So this building, uh, in a very very similar way, maybe in a little bit more experimental way, it follow the aptitude of the other museum in some way. No, um, our work is really about. Uh, emphasize uh, the diversity of the places, emphasize the uniqueness of the places, and uh, yeah, and just make uh, civic architecture that permit to the citizen to uh, live better in some way. And thank you.